Hey everybody, God bless you guys in Jesus' name. I want to share with you a word that I actually preached on Sunday, but I want to share this word with you basically to say this. The title of my message is this. The enemy whom you see today, you shall see again no more. The title, and I'm going to say this again, the enemy in which you see today, you shall see again no more. So come with me in the word, and I'm going to be reading out of Exodus 14, starting right here at verse number verse number 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched, marched after them, so they were very afraid. So notice, watch this, y'all. So the Egyptians, they had been set free, left them. The Egyptians now were on their tail coming after them and fear began to grip their hearts. So they were very afraid and the children of Israel cried out. Now, now watch this. The children of Israel cried out. Now you got to remember, this is millions of people. This is not just a hundred people. This is not just a few people and a few little people in a little uh, camp meeting or a little gathering. No, this is millions of people crying out to the Lord. Now watch what happens. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away? <laughs> uh, sometimes, brothers and sisters, see, sometimes people won't understand your obedience. People will not understand your obedience and your faithfulness to the Lord. And sometimes they'll think that your faith that God leading you is going to be insane because they can't reason, reason or calculate or figure out why would God bring us to this place and then fail us, so they thought, send us out here to die, so they thought, do this to us. Can I get a witness? Why would God let me do it if he knew? Ever been there? If God knew this was going to turn out this way, why would he have allowed me to make that decision or get in this situation? Been there, done that? Who am I speaking to today? Come with me. Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness why have you so dealt with us? See how it becomes so personal and so self-absorbed? <laughs> Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up and out of Egypt? Question mark. Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we that than that we should die in the wilderness. See, they were so used to bondage that they would they would have rather served the enemy rather than trust God because they couldn't calculate and figure out the outcome of how he was going to do this thing. And what they ultimately did, like most people do, is they route to default or they route back to familiar of what it is they can rationalize and come to an understand of that makes sense to them, that brings not even a comfort because that will never sustain, that will never succeed you, that will never work for you because it is only by faith that in faith, God is pleased, as it says in the book of Hebrews. So when people are living and walking by fear, they then will say, man, like they like they said here, it would have it would have been better for us to serve the, the enemy 
than that we should die in the wilderness. Come on, man. This is what people do. This is what people do. They they much rather route to serving or being or being tied to or or um caught up in bondage of what it is they just got let let loose of and now they get to experience the freedom and the open plains of what it is that God was leading them in but because they thought the enemy was going to get to them if God brought you out if God did a miracle for you if God did it for you what makes you believe and or think that he's not going to take care of the rest you mean to tell me God's going to get you up and out of bondage put 10 plagues and then leave you out there stranded not finish the job no no that that is not the Lord that's why a lot of Christians end up uh um assassinating their own blessings their own miracles robbing themselves of their own victories robbing themselves of going to the next level robbing themselves of opportunity is because they get so they get they get so fearful when they get out in faith and in the open plains and it takes trusting the lord to take you to here we go and moses said to the people verse number 13 do not be afraid Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see no more forever. That is my word to you today, brothers and sisters. And when you get time, continue reading and finishing the text. But that is my word to you. The enemy that you see today, you will see no more forever those things that have been chasing you down and you think they're gonna take you out and destroy your life and why would god allow this why would god do that why did he why did all of the question marks can simply be answered in your trust your reliance and your obedience to god's faithfulness of what he's leading you to concerning you for the better of your life for his glory because he is the one that is going to accomplish it for you bringing you through taking you to and doing in your life what only he can do anyway see these same people even though the enemy in which they seen or saw, they would no longer see no more forever because the waves were going to take them out once they pass through. The enemy in your life is going to get taken out. But even though the enemy got removed from their life, watch this, even though the enemy got removed from their life and the enemy got off their tail and there no longer was an enemy, they still didn't get to enter into the promised land because of the, the, the evil report of the 10 spies that came back with a wicked evil report that saw themselves as small, minute, and grasshopper, grasshopper-like and did not have the lenses like Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Joshua got to enter in and go into, but the 10 with the evil report actually stopped their progress, even though the devil had been dealt with, their enemy, the Egyptians had been dealt with, and they're no longer upon the scene, but they still had not transformed, they still had not renewed and, and appreciated what God had done for them on that day.